Welcome back to Keeping Tabs. I'm Tabitha Croc. Make sure that you check us out on YouTube, Spotify, or iTunes to keep up to date on all the interviews coming your way. I also would like to thank our sponsor, 32 Below, Froyo and more. They are officially open here in Coeur d'Alene, frozen yogurt, adult floats, beer, wine, paninis. Um, so make sure you go check them out, follow them on social media, keep up to date on everything happening. All right, so now enjoy that episode. I have Amy with AIM Nutrition with me. Um, thank you so much for doing this. Um, I met her, we were just talking about, I met her at the Kootenai County Police and Fire Memorial Foundation bike ride and AIM did a whole team. They donated, they um, were a sponsor for the hour, gave tons of food. Um, AIM Nutrition is someone I love to follow. They're very um, community minded, but also um, all the health stuff you guys are doing. So without me talking a bunch, tell me a little bit about you and then we'll go into AIM. Okay. Uh, yeah. Again, first off, thank you for having me. Um, well, I, my name is Amy. I am the founder of AIM. Um, I'm also a wife to Justin Wern, who's a fireman for the city of Coeur d'Alene. Uh, I am the mom to a son and daughter, an eight-year-old and a six-year-old, Brooks and Isla. Um, I run the local Wildland CrossFit here in town. Um, so I manage that, and then I run AIM as well as coach a handful of clients. So you are busy. <laughs> I mean, I love it. I love, wouldn't change it for the world. Good. So tell me, how did AIM start? Um, so I was a teacher. I have a master's in teaching and was a second grade teacher for 10 years and then a fifth grade teacher. And uh, during that time, I had done Ironmans and then moved into CrossFit and really just kind of got into nutrition and kind of tried the whole smorgasbord of what worked for me. Um, and about four years ago, I was introduced to macros and that worked well for my mentality, right? Like I was all about, like, I'm not giving up the simple joys of life uh, to, for a body, you know? And so, um, but at the same time, I wanted to perform well and not look like I just had two kids and feel confident in my skin and so on. Um, so I started, got into macro counting, um, and then I put on just a couple of challenges for our gym and had great success there. And uh, fast forward, and pretty soon, I'm being asked if I can coach some people on the side while I was also being a full-time teacher. And um, as you could see, this kind of just started to build. And so it was one of those things where we were like, okay, I either need to stop <laughs> that because the whole like 4 a.m. wake up and, and work with clients and then go to school and then make family time and then do it in the evening wasn't working. Um, so they needed to stop doing that or stop teaching. And so we, uh, crossed her fingers and decided to give AIM a shot and went all in and really happy we did. Yeah, you guys are doing some great things. Uh, so here's the, the unfortunate thing I'm going to ask you is how has COVID-19, how is this pandemic, this stay at home, how has it affected you guys? You know, we're a little different because we're not a brick and mortar business. Uh, we're run completely remote. Um, and so our coaches, we have five coaches and they they work with people all around, uh, all around the nation. And I think the main thing for us is we've seen a bigger shift in our coaching than we have from a business standpoint, right? There were some things we had to put in play. Um, we hold a, a, a nutrition challenge like every, every spring and we didn't want it to um, bring on another challenge in an already seemingly challenging time. So we decided to host a taste of aim, just an experience. So we shifted that around. We offered a discount to past clients and essential workers. Um, but a big one was that we also had a group about 30 people that were going to run the Coeur d'Alene half marathon from our aim, from our aim community. Um, and so we had this aim runs a half marathon, right? And every, I had written a program and we were kumbaya on it and, and then it got canceled. No. Um, and so what was awesome is we actually kind of got together and I went on our closed Facebook group and was like, what do you guys want to do? You know, like who still wants to do this? And, um, everybody, most people were like, I do, you know, like this wasn't necessarily about running it, um, uh, running the quarterly half. It was just about 
you know, accomplishing something. So um, we shifted and we are putting on our own marathon or um, half marathon uh, in a couple weeks. And we've created a course. I have uh, things ordered for the people that, you know, accomplish this task and we've been running and so on. So um, that has been pretty fantastic, right? That was like a shift for us. But yeah, business wise, we're doing all right. We're a little different uh, in that standpoint. Um, but, and really just focusing now on helping people transition through these different times, right? Into the stay at home order and now out of the stay at home order. So big shift coaching wise, I would say. Yeah. And I think, I think it's really important to, I mean, right now we're all dealing with the nutrition, probably why we're at home. We're at home more, like we're not on our regular routine. So I guess kind of tell us the importance of, I guess, working or hiring aim. Yeah. You know, I think most people, when you hear like a nutrition coach, most people are like, I know how to eat. I just choose not to, or I just don't have the willpower. And it's like, no, 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 no. Mm -hmm. Right. A nutrition coach is, we don't, everybody knows fruit and vegetables are good. We know eating too much candy is bad. We know exercise is good. That's not what it's about. Right. right? Uh, AIM is about having one person that you rely on, that you get to move through any barrier with right? You have one person that you write in and you say, this was my week, right? Like blah, 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 blah. And they say, okay, well, how are we going to attack it? Let's yeah. look at the habits you have in place. Look at, let's look at the systems. What about trying this, right? So we're that objective uh, perspective into somebody's journey because honestly, we're, we're pretty irrational when we come to our own journeys. We're way too close to ourselves. Um, and so we're just, we're just that objective voice. And I think in a time like this, right, we do a good job of creating a community and um, really focusing on the things that matter most that most people don't think of. So self-care, uh, the power of maintenance, and really the power of what habits do you have? What systems do you have in place? What's working? What's not? And where are you giving your energy? Um, That's awesome. Yeah, it's all things that people, you know, people are like, oh, I can get macros online, right? And it's like, we're so much further past just prescribing macros and telling you like how to eat. Like nutrition is so much bigger than that. Um, and it's really all about the other 80% of stuff uh, that's behind the scenes. And so that's what we're here for. That's awesome. Yeah. So what's your favorite thing and your least favorite thing about um, your job? Mm. My favorite things is it's more than one because I get to be a nutrition coach, which is what started all of this, um, which is just, uh, I, I get to be in people's corners. You know, they come to us sad, frustrated, um, and we, you know, they allow us into a space where we get to move along their journey with them and watch them come out of it happy and confident and accomplished, you know, and getting to be a part of that hands down is just amazing. Right. Uh -huh. Um, and then I'm a teacher at heart. And so for me, like the knowledge that people leave with is also, uh, rewarding for me. And then from a, from a business standpoint, I also, you know, have a successful business and I got, we've hired five other coaches and these coaches are from our community they're my friends. Um, and I get to watch them excel at something that they're really good at. And so I kind of get like the cherry on top of the Yeah. <laughs> Real nice. Feel lucky. That's awesome. Uh, oh, and yeah. Least favorite? yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I was asking, I was like, what is actually, I think Justin, he was like, what is your least favorite thing? And it was pretty, I feel like there's only one. Um, and that is that work doesn't stop. When you don't have a place to go to, um, you know, when I don't have a school to go to, I show up, I do work, and then I leave. Uh, my work is my computer, and your computer can go anywhere. And so uh, that, I think, is the hardest part for me, and probably my least favorite is that I, if I don't set boundaries, I have a tendency to plug in work right throughout the day, uh, not necessarily where it should be plugged in at. So. Oh, keeping I, those boundaries. Yes, I am guilty of that as well. <laughs> right? right? Um, so what would you tell a younger Amy? What would you tell a younger you? Um, advice. Yes, advice. Um, 
read more. Mm-hmm. I think, you know, reading, I, reading and just getting out there and seeing what's out there, you know, that's, that's one part of it. Um, because a lot of us don't really know what, what's really out there. Um, and we don't realize how much we don't know. <laughs> and so, uh, especially when I'm younger, you know, I was like, Oh, I'm going to be a teacher and this is how it's going to work and blah, 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 blah. And, um, there was this whole world of stuff that I didn't, um, you know, wasn't privy to, I didn't, I wasn't aware of. Um, and so I, I think reading more and being, getting myself more exposed, um, to other ideas was, is something that I would hope to help my children do. Um, and then also just really like following what you find that interests you. So, um, I could tell when I went to college that I got really into nutrition and, um, exercise yet. I didn't want to veer from my teaching degree. Um, and not, it worked out well, like I'm, I'm still teaching. Um, but I, I would say like push harder, you know, if you find yourself lost in something like you're enthralled in it and all of a sudden time's gone by and, um, you're like, wow. I just wasted there. I just spent that much time doing something like chase that yeah. because you're obviously interested and love that, whatever that is. And so, um, yeah, I, I, I would have been like, no, go chase that. <laughs> yeah. That's perfect. Go that way. Yeah. Um, so let's, I know in Idaho, we're starting to lift things slowly and it's starting to get kind of back to something and we have a goal and a plan. Um, so when things are all lifted and things are kind of back to that new normal, what's the first thing you're going to do? Is there something that you want to do so bad that you have to wait till quarantine is lifted? I tried to get sushi the other night from Syringa and I thought I was going to be cool and like call it five and be able to drive down there and have it at five 30. Um, and they were like, Oh, we have the seven 30 time slot open. And I was like, <laughs> um, so stop one will probably go eat sushi. Yes. Um, and then, Oh, I just cannot wait to get back to my wildland CrossFit crew and like be around them and work out with people and hug them and hugging, hugging. Yeah. I love, I love giving hugs and miss giving hugs. Um, I don't know, pretty much those things exercise with my, my crew and go out and have a great dinner. Um, I've missed those two things. Yeah. Especially with CrossFit. I know that community and any cross, I mean, I'm, I don't CrossFit, but I noticed that with all the CrossFit communities, they're so tight and they do everything together and it's amazing community. Yeah, it is. And you know, I mean, I'm sure it's like any, it's like any gym. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, you do. And we, we have zoom classes and stuff, but it's just, you're like, hi, you know, how how are you? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) You're doing great. great. I can't spot your butt from here. (laughs) Exactly. But it looks great. (laughs) So my last question is how can the community support you right now? Uh, honestly, just know, you know, be open, uh, be vulnerable and, and be willing to support yourself, right? If you want something, if you want to improve your relationship with food, if you want to gain muscle, race, go, you know, um, put yourself out there for a race, do any of those things. If you have goals, like don't be afraid to reach out and inquire about a coach. Um, I think, I think people often are like, I can't, I can't spend that money on myself. And I want to be like, no, you're worth it. Mm-hmm. You're worth it. So I would just say, you know, if you, if you have a goal and uh, reach out, reach out cause we're here and, and that's what we do and we're good at it. And uh, we want to help. Awesome. Well, thank you so very much yeah. for doing this and have a good one. Thanks for listening to Keeping Tabs. I'm Tabitha Croc, and every Monday I release a podcast about different community members here in North Idaho. And then we end the weeks on Fridays with a podcast about the things I'm passionate about, outdoors, adventures, sports, the van life, and even current events. So if you like what you heard, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube, Spotify, or iTunes. Thank you again. Now go be kind and do something great.